uh, we're ready and I hope it will work just fine. Seems like we're in, we're live. Yeah, you can say hi to people. Yay! Anyone Hello! Who's watching. Yeah, it is public. Hey guys! Yeah, to everyone who's watching, uh, we're back with our live streams and uh, today we're discussing the news again. What a um, surprise! Just, yeah, what a surprise! Unless all the um, other times. <laughs> Okay, what a nice conversation. <laughs> anyway, you froze. Sick. It seems like we're going to be having these troubles from time to time on here because it happened a couple times already on previous live streams. And if you guys don't <laughs> so, know, yeah, oh, and wait, no, hold on. no, you were frozen for quite a while. You you were also frozen. Awesome. So I was just talking to myself here, and you too on your end. Yeah. Anyway. We got to start because we can't be rolling with it for forever, literally. Okay, you guys, we uh, decided to actually make it a little bit uh, in a different way today. And what I mean by that is that we are going to set a timer because uh, all the previous live streams, they were intended to be up to 30, maximum 40 minutes, like 40 minutes tops, but it never worked out. So we decided to actually bring some innovation on today's live stream. And this is going to be a timer. And Erin will be our timekeeper and she's frozen again. So it keeps happening. And I'm wondering why. And well, maybe, maybe I'm going to stuck here all alone. This is also a possibility. Anyway, uh, today we're going to review some news and we're also going to talk about the article of the week that we picked for uh, today's stream also going to talk about the artist of the week and a couple tools that we picked for you guys to check out if you if you want to spice up your design routine or something anyway okay just great maybe she'll reconnect and she'll get back to us oh, oh. hi you hi how have you been um now you're frozen again anyway um I'll just keep talking because it can last forever and if Irene is there, she will eventually join us on uh, this stream. Okay, so the first piece of news we're going to be discussing today is that Google search will now favor websites with great UX. And what that means is that Google changed their algorithm once again. They've been doing it uh, quite often recently. As you know, they they're regularly uh, roll out new updates and sometimes people get like very pissed at those updates, but sometimes there are they're just great and they are improving the user experience for all the users all over the internet overall and people are loving it but uh, over time there inevitably will be changes and uh, over some time uh, Google have been drifting towards giving the websites with better UX like higher rankings at least there will be, they were talking about that there were there have been a lot of rumors and speculations that they actually one day they're going to roll out an official update that will say that, okay, if your website sucks, if the UX of your website sucks, you're going to have lower chances and your website will not rank as high as it could. Um, okay. A new set of best practices. The company will start factoring user experience into its search results, as well as the top stories featured in mobile search. So what it means is that they're actually will be focusing on uh, they will actually be focusing their strategy to bring in the website with better UX to the top of uh, their search results. But how will Google know that your website has a good UX as opposite to your website having bad UX design? Um, anyways, Google will still rank pages with the best information first, even if the UX is less than ideal. So what it means is that they will still favor the... Okay, let me check. Uh, for some reason, give me a second. Um, we'll try to reconnect to Irene because she was she has been sending me some messages, and I will try and uh, reconnect. Are you there? Yes, I'm I've here. Been, yeah, I've been rambling here for a while and hopes to get you back here. Yeah, I'm um, here. Excuse me, I don't know what what happens uh, all the time. On the on the other hand, actually, we've been having some issues with. With the streaming as well because it says that the chat is disconnected for some reason and this is weird probably this is this this can be in mind because i would see the, the uh, also the notification that the connection is not as good but okay let's keep rolling with it hopefully yeah. hopefully we're gonna get somewhere okay fingers what crossed saying, yeah <laughs> what i've been saying is that well 
even though Google is rolling out this update, they will still be focusing on the websites that provide that. Okay, information first, looks second, but still they will now uh, prioritize the websites with better UX a little higher than they did than they did before. Is that right? Yeah, it's right. Actually, like this has become. Uh, yeah, it's not like they're rolling out it this year. Uh, actually, they're going to be focusing on the UX uh, more starting next year. But this is going to become the ranking factor. And also, the usability and accessibility of websites have become very important. Because as you may or may not know, uh, if the website uh, does not load in 2.5 seconds, yeah, it means it's a bad website uh, from Google's viewpoint. So. Um, they're doing everything to uh, make it more comfortable uh, for the users. But uh, it doesn't mean that uh, the value of information uh, will be neglected in favor of a UX. Uh, because uh, information-rich websites are still going to be important for Google, and Google will be prioritizing them. But uh, they're also adding uh, the UX into the equation. So if, well, like, starting from the next year, if you want your website to rank well, then you should be caring about the UX as well. And all of these uh, uh, features that uh, have been described on Google's guidelines for webmasters. Okay, and uh, um, first question. Have you set the yeah. timer? Yes. Okay, good. Good to know. So, uh, and uh, they quickly mentioned, they actually do not mention in the article how exactly they're going to determine if the UX is good or not but they give here a sad like quite a vague explanation of what it's going to look like giving you a list of these uh metrics like metrics related mm -hmm. to speed yes. responsiveness visual stability mobile friendliness safe browsing but it has already been there for quite a while there's nothing new about these metrics and about the fact that they, actually google is looking at these metrics quite closely when deciding which websites to rank higher so for now we don't have actually any like any well, detailed information on that uh the article has a link to a set of best practices yeah on the Chromium blog, so I guess uh, there's more in-depth information about this, like the updates uh, that are like going to be uh, rolled out sooner or later. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So let's not dwell into that. I believe there's like there's more to come, more news to come, uh, and so of course, uh, if we talk about Google ranking factors, then uh, we should follow the algorithms, and uh, we've talked about this, I guess, in some of our videos. We've talked about BERT and YMYL algorithm, which values uh, like money, uh, your money equals your life. So uh, I suggest you should look into that uh, in more detail if you're interested in how Google actually ranks websites and how SEO works in 2020. So we still have... Um, we still have 13 minutes. Two um, minutes. <laughs> yeah, two minutes until it's like... 10 minutes in what i wanted to suggest is that you could um you have access to the dashboard right so you could copy the link so we can share it with uh the viewers as long like you know while we're discussing the article so they could like have a glance at it themselves so what do you think if we shared this link link to this particular article that we're discussing right now to the live chat again it happened again guys uh anyway uh, while we're waiting for Irene to reconnect, I'm going to jump to the next next article, which is like probably my very favorite piece of news. And what is that is the announcement of uh, Summer Game Fest. Um, a lot of people have been like pre pretty upset that uh, the live... Oh, okay. Disconnected or connected again. Yes. I kept talking. Weird. Wait, you, you shared the link to the live chat. And this is my favorite thing this week, definitely. Okay. Uh, this The Game Fest. Uh, yeah, so E3 and um, some of other uh, events like Gamescom have been uh, canceled, like in-person events uh, on some of the, on, on actual venues. They have been canceled. And if you don't know, okay, probably not all of the people who are interested in design are interested in games. But we decided to share this piece of news as well because we're going to have a look at uh, the official website of the Summer Game Fest and maybe you guys are going to be interested in uh, the actual design of uh, the landing page. Uh, so, 
these events have been cancelled and Summer Game Fest is gonna actually in, in a way serve as a replacement for this year's big gaming events and it has a schedule on the website and let's just jump there have been a um there have been a uh, link to the landing page actually and this is yeah what is that is it 20 minutes no it's been five five minutes so you kind of picked like five minutes per piece of news this is cruel stop this yeah <laughs> um what is that oh no thank you so uh, this is the uh, landed page that uh, they designed and what I noticed about it is that they picked this sort of I don't even know how to call it but it's it's something like a mixture of uh, the cyberpunk aesthetic with the very pastel light colors and this looks yeah. quite interesting and it kind of reminded me you know this use of black and yellow this combination actually reminded me of the official uh, cyberpunk 2077 landing page and it looks pretty great and it seems like they went with a similar aesthetic at least here in these sections where they heavily use uh yellow and black and also these buttons you know this is like totally it was totally inspired by this similar aesthetic and what i've been thinking today and actually shared this with irene i shared my thoughts and i've been thinking that it would be cool if we made a series uh maybe a documentary maybe a tutorial and also maybe a showcase of some cyberpunk, cyberpunk. aesthetic inspired designs and we're going to be actually be doing it and if you guys support this idea you might shout out in the comments let us know if you actually like uh, this aesthetic overall if you would be interested to see more material from us uh, talking about this showing you some inspiration on that and sh sharing some interesting facts about it maybe even making a tutorial i actually got a couple ideas for a tutorial and i found a little uh, bit of very interesting information online so i'm pretty sure it's going to be exciting and this is pretty much it uh about the gaming uh about the game fest uh, about this game piece of news from the gaming world i know you guys not everyone is interested in games so if you're interested in that check out the links irene um if she's generous enough to share it to the live chat you can even check i've it already out. did yeah awesome. i already did thanks a ton. Them. <laughs> for some reason my chat is disconnected and um uh, but maybe i'm not seeing it from uh from the dashboard but whatever no it actually works so it it's works. fine awesome yeah. and it's just just I'm not seeing it for some reason. If there are any comments, you just let me know so I can kind of try and manage. Yeah, sure. Um, anyway, what was I saying? Okay, next one. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. link is there, you guys. If you're interested in it, go and check this out. I'm really liking the design and the direction where they went with it. It looks pretty interesting, and it's exciting that we're going to have events across all the three months of summer. We're going to have some sort of events related to gaming and all all the gaming news and the, the most exciting piece of news for everyone is the um the presentation well, not not the official like ps5 uh presentation but the presentation of games they're going to be running on the next generation of consoles but i'm not a game journalist so we're gonna move on to another piece of news which is i was showing me the pop-up for some reason okay the next one which is actually not a piece of news, but an article of the week. And this one was picked by Irene. Can you please tell us a couple mm -hmm. words why you picked this exact one? Well, uh, this uh, like this article uh, seemed very interesting to me uh, from the designer standpoint uh, because, well, I'm not a designer, as you know, I'm a marketer, but uh, to me, it's always interesting to learn uh, something new about design and uh, things uh, that are connected to it. And so in this article, uh, the author has gathered 10 best design systems and uh, they tell you how you can actually get insights for your design work from these design systems systems. So uh, what a design system is, I don't think, well, should I explain this? Uh, but like very uh, briefly, not yeah, to like, dwell on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in a nutshell, a design system is like a collection of documents and articles, examples, maybe code snippets, uh, something uh, to explain how a particular uh, design, product design works, or maybe some digital assets or design philosophy of a brand or a company works. 
Um, and so uh, this, all of this is gathered in one place, uh, and you've probably seen uh, Google material design, or you've probably seen uh, Shopify design patterns, MailChimp design patterns, and so all of these are design systems, which basically guide you uh, through the way uh, of how to use uh, these particular um, uh, like this particular design knowledge. So I think this is cool um, because this article not only gives you the links, but it also tells you why these design systems are uh, great, uh, what are their pros and cons, and what's the philosophy behind these design systems. So I believe uh, this is going to be uh, very interesting for someone who's um, interested in design in general or maybe works uh, using these particular uh, design systems. Also, there's Apple human interface guidelines. So there's plenty of information. Um, okay, frozen again. Uh, so yeah, and I highly design. Okay. Are you there? It disconnected for, for a second again. And we're having a pretty yeah, yeah, I'm here. bumpy road today. Oh. Uh, anyway, uh, we got actually, we got a comment in the live chat and I think you should take this one because you definitely will give a way better answer than I can manage. Um, if you if you can hear me anyway. So uh, in a nutshell, right, um, this is uh, for the people who maybe are not that experienced in uh, the UI and UX field. And this is uh, gonna be a pretty interesting piece of reading. Also, they're giving examples how this can be used. And of course, you probably know that if you create a design system uh, for some website for a company, this this will also serve like a sort of a style guide. For example, if you are going to be hiring people uh, to work on your material, uh, material guide, on your marketing materials, then they're going to be using this style guide as a base to create um, the, the visual, the, the materials for the visual, the visual materials for the marketing campaign. Oh God, yeah. are you there? Yeah, I'm here, I'm back. You're there. Uh, have you checked the comments in the live chat? There is something uh, pretty interesting. But I'm pretty sure you're going to do a way better job at answering that one. Okay, moving on. While okay, does GPL is... theme? While Irene is handling the question, should we move on? Well, um, Jesus. Um, I'm here, I'm back. Well, uh, I don't actually know about uh, how GPL... Uh, can affect Google ranking, and I don't uh, see like the direct connection. But I believe that um, it doesn't really matter what kind of theme you're using, as long as uh, uh, your content is there, and as long as it's SEO optimized. So, really, if uh, the theme is high quality and from um, a credible vendor, uh, and if the theme doesn't have, for instance, doorways or some hidden links or um, like black hat SEO tactics used to develop this theme, then most likely it will not really affect your uh, Google ranking. But of course, if uh, this particular GPL theme or whatever theme you're um, you're buying uh, is using some Black Hat SEO tactics and uh, the developers have used uh, some Black Hat SEO tactics, then for sure uh, this is going to hurt your Google ranking. So I suggest that if you're picking some themes, then probably you should uh, pick them from credible uh, providers like theme providers uh, from vendors that you can trust. For sure, and uh, a template monster marketplace. All of our themes are credible, so I suggest you should go and have a look at those themes. Even free themes that we have there are also credible, and they do not use black hat SEO tactics for sure, like hundred percent sure. Yeah, you have to approach picking the provider for your theme, but very like this is. Okay, approach this responsibly with responsibility because it will determine the end, the, the quality of the end product if we are talking about a website, right? If the theme is flawed, then you cannot create anything good right. with a flawed theme because this is going to be basically basically a base, <laughs> actually a base of uh, your future website, yeah. literally. Um, have you set your timer? What is that? What, yeah. what time is it? 
one minute. You want to you want to keep talking about the uh, rankings and that stuff, or we can move on to the tool. I've actually been showcasing the next tool, which is uh, I'm going to try to any mockup. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is it. So, and basically, what this is is really cool. And f okay, this is like the starting point for you if you don't want to take a lot of time creating your mockups. Even though it is recommended that if you want to showcase like if you want to showcase your project in the best way whatever you know doesn't matter if you're posting it on dribble if you're posting it on behance uh it is also recommended and it has been proven to gather actually better feedback and better impressions if you take your time and you work on your mockups uh, if you take beautiful photographs if it's product packaging or if it's an app like in this case uh this quick and this quick application allows you to create very like fast mockups you know like in a couple seconds you can upload you get a device in here it is already preloaded you can pick from a list of multiple devices you drop your video of uh, your like ux prototype with animation and you also drop the background image and here you have it you have a background you have an, a device and you have the footage uh, that you animated of your app like of your product prototype or concept whatever that is and that's pretty much that and if you need it that fast if you want to make it that simple this is the great solution for you you don't need to open soft any additional software you can do it like right here you don't even it seems like you don't even need to log in you can just download the mockup or upload it directly to twitter or dribble but uh, if it's like if you need it to make it very quickly to have like a general idea of how your app is going to look like in a specific device maybe like to show it to the client and to see if they like it or not i don't know for whatever reason you might want to go this road like very looking for a very simple mock-up solution but this is a great way if you want to make things in a quick and simple way but it is recommended that if you want to make your your work look even better than it actually does that you have to work on uh, the project presentation as hard as you did work on the project itself but yeah. moving on where is your timer oh it's still ticking <laughs> okay next actually, one yeah. uh, actually the next one is the brand fetch from adobe xd dude hold on oh no all good sorry uh we can we can go on um fetch brands into adobe xd what is that can you give us a quick overview of what is it what, how well it is. this is a free like 100 percent free online uh adobe xd extension and uh, it can actually save you time because it automates the search of brand assets like for logos you. yeah like kind of logos thing. Uh, yeah, uh, and uh, all other elements of your branding and your corporate style. So uh, all you need to do is enter a URL and you get the, well, as uh, the description says, you get the corresponding asset back straight into Adobe XD. And it works fast and it's really effective. So I believe this uh, is a great tool for everyone who does logos, who does branding and um I, I suggest that you should try it because uh, it also has uh, the demo demo version and you can try it to see it in action. Hold on, it is free. Yeah, it's free. It's 100% free. Yeah, but uh, if, you, if it's like, it seems like it's under a 300 request a month. But I'm pretty sure that you're gonna, it's gonna be enough. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's gonna be enough. It, yeah. It, it sounds like a lot. Like 300 requests, what I, as, as far as I understand, this is you can, you can fetch these brand assets 300 times a month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Something like that. that sounds quite like a decent number. Not gonna lie. Oh, okay. Uh, where is, hold on, give me a second. Um, give me a second. I'm going to, oh, I need to check what we have to move on on to next and what is that uh tool of the week oh for some reason i lost that that link okay here turning it back on so i'm not showing you all of the hundreds of tabs that i have open in my browser okay we're moving on to the artist of the week and we've yep. been live for like 24 minutes setting the records today like this is the this is the earliest 
time that we got to the artist of the week normally it would be like 40 minutes in or like 50 minutes in but today we're getting it on 24 minutes in the live stream who is it why did you pick this artist today well i picked robert berkey i believe uh that's how it's pronounced his name is pronounced sorry it's if i yeah, yeah. <laughs> if i uh, mispronounced it but um I picked this artist because uh, I loved his uh, UI UX prototypes for applications like different mobile apps. Of course, the colors, that's what really uh, caught my eye because the combination of colors is super juicy and super vibrant. And that's what like usually catches my eye. You know that? As always. Yeah. Yeah, as always. But on yeah, the other side, yeah, guys, this is the yeah. only criteria. <laughs> Yeah, but not not only criteria. Actually, he has a uh, lots of website uh, samples and website prototypes, and uh, the photography and the three D effects are also great. You can actually scroll down a little bit, and he uses the references from these uh, uh, antique Greece sculptures and uh, things like that. So I'm really fond of this style, and. Uh, it's simply amazing how uh, this guy combines the colors and how the colors pop on the black background as well. So, well, to me, this looks very cool. What about you? Well, okay, I scrolled down a little bit and definitely there is a lot, a lot of colorful work and it's, okay, it definitely stands out if you will be scrolling like a generic dribble feed with all of these minimalistic minimalism has been popular for quite a while and it is still um, it actually makes a huge chunk of like everything that takes dribble feed well it comes down to website design or app design and uh this this has a reason behind it right because people it has been proven that people react positively to uh, minimalistic yeah. designs because it doesn't nothing distracts them they can easily find what they need they can easily find what they want and uh, this is a way to go but i'm really loving this experimental approach and sometimes this is like okay this looks really cool this looks awesome and it looks eye-catching and you definitely once you open such a uh, a web page you'll be like whoa what is that and the first thing that you should think about when creating such a design for a real project is if it actually fits uh because mm -hmm. like if it's a uh, as we showed before like if it's a video game if it's a some sort of event like for a younger generation right because if you're creating a uh, landing page for an event that will take place and most of the attendee uh, attendance will be like people over six years old i'm not saying that people over 60 cannot appreciate good design it's not what i'm saying but every single approach actually needs to have the target audience in mind this this is generally this kind of design is not what people in the 60 year old 60 plus uh demographic you know um tend to like this is not yeah. this is not uh among their preferences normally uh, so well, they prefer something more conservative. Yeah, I definitely. Think, yeah. So I think that it looks awesome, great for some, uh, for landing pages, for apps, for some events, for something from the popular culture like movies, uh, games. I already mentioned games, some music festivals, concerts, maybe some uh, portfolio pages. Like designers love to create designers and web studios. Uh, love to create very, like, very crazy designs for their own portfolio pages or their own personal uh, pages because they like they like when they look insane and they will catch attention and people just can't they can't walk walk past walk but it, they can't scroll past this kind of design basically I think that uh, this approach definitely has some audience and quite a huge audience and I think well this definitely looks great and I'm loving it I don't know if these are real projects, if any of these are real projects or if these are uh, only concept. I do not know. And as far as I can tell, um, okay, they're not, you, you can, guys, you can check this out and you can read for yourselves. I'm not going to be uh, digging too deep into it. 
normally uh, normally people say if it's a concept or if it's a real project for a client and sometimes we can provide a link to a real app they've been working on or the real website they've been working on so people can experience the real thing um, here you can also check this out and see but definitely looks eye catching looks very inspiring so uh, very brave experimental um, very bright colors eye catching loving it great pick for today as well thanks good, good <laughs> job i'm loving it okay um is that hold on is that it yeah we still have two minutes uh, according to my timer it's like it's been 30 minutes in so we gotta wrap this up like about 10 minutes ago we should have wrapped this up uh -huh. anyway um uh, we are going to be wrapping this up i'm gonna leave uh this beautiful greed of this work as my backdrop let's let me pick okay this let it be let it be that anyway thank you guys for staying with us today okay it's too bright uh thank you for staying with us today thank you for uh joining today's live stream uh i hope i hope you're doing great and anyways as you remember, we're doing these weekly weekly live streams every week, as you might have guessed, at the same time, around the same time. And uh, we'll be posting updates on when the stream is expected to be happening. Sometimes um, we might be late, like 10 minutes or so, but I really hope you guys can excuse us for it. Not us, but me, because I'm the one who is always late uh, normally. But uh, yeah, I'm guilty of that, but hopefully that's going to change in the future. I will work on that anyway. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for joining in. If you have some topic that you would like to suggest for our future tutorials, for our other documentaries that we've been posting recently, we've posted a couple of documentaries and people seem to be really interested in that type of content. So if you guys have any ideas, any requests, post them down there in the comments or in the live chat right now in the, in the live stream. And we're going to see if we can make something out of it and we can actually deliver uh, the content that you want us to deliver. Uh, we're going to wrap this up. Two minutes? Yeah. Yep. We have exhausted all our resources. Thank <laughs> you guys for joining in. Will you say a couple of words and we're going to go? Yeah, offline. sure. Uh, guys, don't forget to check our website, templatemonster.com. Oh, wait, uh, we have a website. Yeah. Of course, Give and uh, gonna... we are actually rolling out an update, like not an update, but a completely new website pretty soon. So stay tuned for uh, the news because this is going to be a totally game changer, like a totally different uh, thing to look at. And uh, we're going to announce this soon. And also, uh, as for what we told before, uh, we're going to experiment a little bit with our content and uh, we're going to create uh, a few videos on cyberpunk and maybe uh, like a crossover uh, between uh, the cyberpunk style and uh, Elementor. So keep checking our channel, subscribe to our channel for new uh, videos, for fresh updates. And uh, we're happy to uh, read your comments and to learn if you liked uh, our videos. So thanks for joining us today. Thanks for being with us um, on this live stream and hopefully we'll see you next time. So have a nice day, yeah. have fun. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully, have fun, your favorite tagline. <laughs> anyway, uh, actually, I mean, mentioned, just mentioned this and I've been thinking uh, if it's a crazy enough idea to try and recreate the Cyberpunk 2077 website design in Elementor, it could be possible. I checked this and I think I could figure this out, how, how to do this. I mean, the button design, the section, um, uh, God, forgot how to call them, uh, the section separators design, that kind of thing. I think we could figure out how to do that and if you guys would be interested in seeing that just let us know in the live chat and in the comments or whatever maybe we'll post post like a poll or something a little later to learn if people would like to see it or not anyway we have a lot of ideas and um yeah in uh in the future it's gonna be like a lot a lot of content coming in we're working on a couple things right now and hopefully we'll get back on track with our three videos per week we're really aiming to at least yeah, yeah. 
At, le at least this is this is in in the works right now. This is on the list, on the to the list. Anyway, thank you guys for staying in. As Irene mentioned, go and check out the website, the templatemaster.com website. While it is still old, because you have the chance to see it, uh, like the the older version of it, because the newer version will look quite different. And it's gonna what actually is gonna be different is, uh, well. In addition to a lot of other things, it is going to be a wider range of products because we're going to be accepting a lot more uh, product types, which will be like music, audio, like sound effects, video, uh, After Effects templates, all the kind of kinds of things. And this is going to be exciting because the marketplace is going to grow much, much larger, pretty fast. It's okay. Uh, we're not announcing the date yet, so it's going to be a surprise for you guys. And not gonna spoil any more, but uh, we're gonna be actually making a um, an official live stream talking about what this marketplace is, what has changed, what is new, what is what stays the same, what changes, and what benefits you personally could gain from uh, such a marketplace. Um, and yeah, just stay tuned for for the update. Stay tuned for the video announcement. Stay tuned for the live stream. Check out the community tab. Sometimes interesting stuff there. Sometimes polls. Sometimes not. So uh, stay tuned, and you're gonna learn about the launch of our marketplace. Like the the okay, not the launch. It has been launched for a while, but for a huge huge update for our marketplace, you're gonna be the first to learn about that. Anyways, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for joining in. See you next yeah. week, or see you oh. See you this week, but a little later. <laughs> gonna be tutorials, gonna be some very cool video, cyberpunk, cyberpunk inspired video. So, um, see you later. Yeah, see you later.